The James Webb Space Telescope has revealed that the universe has stopped expanding for decades. This is a shock to the entire space industry, as the Big Bang Theory is the most widely accepted explanation for the universe's origin and evolution. To understand the Big Bang Theory, one must first understand the concept of spacetime, which is a mathematical framework that integrates the three spatial dimensions with the time dimension. Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity gives a framework for understanding the curvature of spacetime induced by heavy objects. Dark energy is a hypothetical type of energy that is thought to pervade all of space and exert negative pressure. It is believed to be the cause of the universe's accelerated expansion observed in recent decades. To further comprehend the significance of dark energy, scientists must analyze the balance of gravitational forces and the expansion of the universe. Gravity, the gravitational force that attracts huge objects, attempts to slow the growth, but observations reveal that the expansion of the cosmos is speeding up rather than slowing down. Dark energy, which pervades space uniformly and exerts negative pressure, is responsible for this repulsive force. The distribution of matter in the universe is equally important, as the density of matter and energy influences the curvature of spacetime via general relativity equations. The universe is expanding due to the gravitational collapse of higher density regions under the influence of gravity. This has resulted in the formation of galaxy clusters and superclusters, which are linked together by vast cosmic web-like filaments. Observations and measurements provide evidence for the universe's expansion, such as the redshift of light from distant galaxies, the cosmological redshift, and the cosmic microwave background radiation CMB. Large-scale surveys have yielded precise measurements of the universe's expansion rate and the distribution of matter and energy inside it. JWST's galaxy surveys will be able to map the large-scale structure of the cosmos at high redshifts, when galaxies were still young and crowded together in gigantic groups known as protoclusters. Protoclusters are the ancestors of today's galaxy clusters, which are the universe's greatest gravitationally bound structures. Protoclusters are extremely rare and difficult to find, but the James Webb Space Telescope's wide-field cameras and high sensitivity will allow it to detect hundreds of thousands of galaxies in a single observation. This will allow astronomers to identify protoclusters based on their overdensity of galaxies, spectral properties, spatial dispersion, masses, ages, star formation rates, metallicities, dust content, and gas kinematics. Images captured by the Space Telescope suggest that these galaxies may include nearly as many stars as the modern-day Milky Way galaxy, which is thought to have formed 13 billion years ago. Astronomers have discovered six massive mature galaxies in the same general region of the early universe, which contradict 99% of cosmological predictions. This is due to the JWST's Cosmic Evolution Survey, which was conducted in a region of space near the Big Dipper, which was initially viewed by the Hubble Space Telescope in the 1990s. The galaxy candidates are so surprising that they contradict 99% of cosmological predictions, suggesting that there should not have been enough matter to construct large star systems 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. Researchers believe that accounting for the observed mass of these galaxies will require modifying current cosmological models or revising the scientific understanding of how galaxies arose in the early universe. The Hubble telescope has revealed that the known massive stars in our universe are up to 100 times larger than previously thought. This is a remarkable difference, as it is possible that the objects are not galaxies at all or are different kinds of weird objects, such as faint quasars. A recent study based on data from the European Space Agency's XM-Newton, NASA's Chandra, and the German-led Rosat X-ray Observatories reveals that this fundamental premise of cosmology may be incorrect. This suggests that the universe is expanding in all directions at the same rate, despite minor local deviations, and that the uniform distribution of the cosmic microwave background CMB, in the sky implies that the universe must have expanded quickly. Astronomers have studied the behavior of over 800 galaxy clusters in the present universe with colleagues from the University of Bonn and Harvard University. They noticed that clusters with similar properties in temperatures appeared to be less bright than expected in one direction of the sky and brighter than expected in another, a difference of about 30%. 
The data does not support the hypothesis that there are undetected gas or dust clouds obstructing the view and making clusters appear darker in a specific spot. The team used a set of cosmological parameters and equations to estimate the distance of very distant objects in the universe, believing that the factors are universal. However, if their results are correct, they would have to revisit all their earlier conclusions. The most important details in this text are the results of a test performed on galaxy clusters in X-rays. The scientists hypothesized that this uneven effect on cosmic expansion is driven by dark energy, the mysterious component of the universe that accounts for the vast majority of its total energy. The European Space Agency's planned Euclid telescope, designed to photograph billions of galaxies and investigate the expansion of the universe, could help explain this issue. The Max Planck Institute's X-ray Erosita sensor, mounted on the German-Russian satellite Spectra RG, will conduct the first all-sky server survey in medium-energy X-rays with the goal of discovering tens of thousands of previously unknown galaxy clusters and active galactic centers. Other scientists have supported the idea that the universe may soon stop expanding based on previous studies of cosmic expansion. The most important details in this text are that scientists have known since the 1990s that the universe's expansion is accelerating and that dark energy is an invisible force that appears to operate against gravity, pushing the universe's most massive objects further apart. According to Albert Einstein, dark energy is a cosmological constant and unchanging kind of energy that is woven into the fabric of space-time. However, an alternative theory contends that dark energy may be a quintessence, a dynamic field that changes through time, unlike the cosmological constant, which has been present for 14 billion years. Steinhardt and his colleagues Anna E. Haas of New York University and Cosmon Andre of Princeton predicted that the properties of quintessence could change over the next several billion years. They extended their forecasts into the future after the team's model could accurately repeat the universe's expansion history. Dark energy can decay with time, changing its anti-gravitational quality into something more like ordinary matter. Steinhardt's hypothesis suggests that the universe's fast expansion is already slowing down and that dark energy could become more appealing, causing the entire universe to constrict. Steinhardt explained that from there, one or two things may happen, either the universe contracts until it collapses in on itself in a big crunch, ending spacetime as we know it, or the universe contracts just slowly. Steinhardt's theory of quintessence suggests that the universe may be the most recent in an infinite series of universes that have expanded and contracted within hours, depending on the volatile nature of dark energy. However, there is no practical way to verify whether quintessence is real or whether cosmic expansion has begun to slow for the time being, so it is just a matter of fitting the theory to historical observations. Steinhardt conceded that there is no practical way to verify whether quintessence is real or whether cosmic expansion has begun to slow for the time being, so it is just a matter of fitting the theory to historical observations.